Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python. Today, we'll learn about how to create simple animation. In the last video, we learned how to draw simple shapes on the canvas that we created in our window. These four lines of code create the window that we're going to draw in. And the important settings here are the width and the height of the window that you want to create. And then we learned how to draw simple shapes like ovals and rectangles and so on. Today, let's look at how easy it is to make those shapes animated. To start with, let's draw a circle on the screen. So we'll go back to our canvas create oval command. Right? And let's draw it, we'll draw it up in the corner, 10, 10 to 60, 60. So it will be 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. And let's go ahead and fill it with a color so it looks a little bit more interesting. Okay. Now instead of just drawing that oval, I'm actually going to assign it to a variable. So once we create the oval, this variable will point to that oval, and we can do things with the variable. All right, let's try and make the ball move. So we're going to use the canvas.move command. And that command needs three arguments. Three things need to go in the parentheses. The first one is which object you want to move then a number for how many pixels in the x direction, in the horizontal direction. So we'll put one. And then the last one is how many pixels in the y direction, in the vertical direction. We'll put zero. Okay, so that should move the ball one pixel to the right. Now moving one pixel is going to be really hard to see. So why don't we do it a bunch of times? So we'll make a loop and we'll just count to 400. Since our window is 500 pixels wide, moving 400 pixels should be fine. So this should move the ball one pixel at a time, 400 times. So let's run it and see what happens. There was nothing in my window, and then the ball just jumped all the way to the right. So why did that happen? Well, anytime you use the move command, you need to tell the computer to re draw the things on the screen, to update the pixels on the screen that we're looking at. And you do that with the tk.update command. So this says, after the ball moves, draw the pixels in the new position. And then it'll do it again and do it again. So here's what that looks like. Now we have a nice smooth movement, one pixel at a time. Now this may or may not look so smooth on your computer. And that's because it depends on how fast your computer is and all sorts of things about how your computer is set up. This loop, the computer is trying to do it as fast as it possibly can. And different computers, that might be a different amount of time. So usually what we want to do is slow it down a little bit and sort of take a break in between each update of the screen. You can think of it like a, a cartoon or a flip book if you've ever drawn one of those. You draw a different picture on each page, and then you flip the pages. And the faster you flip the pages, the faster the animation goes. But that speed, how fast you're flipping the pages, is called the frame rate. And the best way for us to slow it down a little bit and make it consistent is to use the time.sleep command. And the time.sleep command is just how many seconds to pause in between each frame of the animation. We'll just put one one hundredth of a second. It's a small number, just something to make it consistent. And we do need to go up here and we need to import the time. Okay. Now when you run it, it should look pretty similar. It might have smoothed out on your computer if you were seeing it move way too fast or kind of jerky. Now let's make our ball do something more interesting than just move a little bit to the right and then stop. We'd like to make a ball that will bounce around the screen and just keep going. Right? So instead of a counting loop here, what we really want to use is a forever loop, a while loop. So let's change this into while true. And let's also go ahead and set some variables for how fast we want our ball to go. Okay? So we can set an x speed and a y speed. And those will be what we'll use in the move command. OK, 
Okay, so right now that's just going to move the ball at a diagonal like that. And of course, when it moves off the screen, it's still going. The Y is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need to tell the computer that we don't want it to go past the edge of the screen. We'd like to see it bounce off the bottom. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about how things behave on the screen. Every object on the screen, for example, our ball, has an imaginary box around it. And you can think of it like this. And that box has two important coordinates, the upper left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. And these sort of tell where the box is on the screen and where the object is inside it. So this would be an x1, y1, right? And then this one over here would be x2, comma, y2, right? You could also think of it as the x1 is the left-hand edge, the y1 is the top, the x2 is the right-hand edge, and the y2 is the bottom. So if you think about that, now we can see what we need to keep track of to tell the computer when we want the ball to bounce. So if the ball is moving in this direction, and this is the edge of the screen, we want the ball to stop when this right-hand edge is the same as the width of the screen, right? When it gets to here, we want to stop moving this way and we want to bounce and go back that way. And we want to do the same thing with the other three sides of the window. And here's an example of that. So I have my ball and you see as it's moving around, those four coordinates keep changing. As I'm moving to the right, the right hand coordinate is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the width of my window is 800. So I want to bounce when that right hand coordinate hits 800. So this would be when I would want to change speed and go back this way. And if I was going down, and I want the bottom, when the bottom reaches the height, I want to bounce. Or when the ball is moving up, when it reaches zero. See how the top is equal to zero? So that's what we want to do. We want to ask the computer, where is the ball? Check the four edges. If it's reached any of those four edges, reverse direction. Okay. So what we're going to do is, after we move the ball, we're going to check the coordinates. And the command for that is canvas.coords, short for coordinates. And then what do you want to know the coordinates of? We want to know the coordinates of the ball. And then I'm going to save that in this pause variable. So now the pause variable looks like this. It has these four coordinates in a list. So since we start out moving to the right and down, we're going to hit the bottom edge first. So why don't we start with the bottom edge? If pause, now which one do we want to look at? Well, the bottom edge is this last one. So this would be pause number 0, 1, 2, 3. So we want to look at position 3. If position 3 is greater than or equal to the height of the window, which is 400, then I want to stop moving down. So I want my y speed to become negative. I want my y to get smaller and smaller. So I want to change the sign of y, of y speed. So I can just say y speed equals minus y speed. Okay, we just reverse direction. So let's see what that does. So we should bounce off the bottom edge now. And then we're going to hit the top edge and not stop. But we want to do the same thing. If we hit the top edge, we want to bounce. And the top edge, we we'll go back to that list, is position 1. And if that ever reaches 0, the top of the screen, we also want to bounce. So that should take care of the top and the bottom. And now we just need to do the same thing for the left and the right. And you see the left is position 0 
and the right is position two. So we will say if position two is ever greater than or equal to the width of the screen, which is 500 in this case, or pause zero is less than or equal to zero, then we want the x direction to reverse. And that should take care of all of the four walls. And that should all work fine if we change the speed. So let's say we wanted to go a little bit faster. And we'll make this one 5. So now we're moving more pixels in each move, so it looks like our ball is going faster. But we're still going to bounce on all the edges. All right, we're just about out of time. But I want to cover one more thing, and that is, what if we decide we want to make our window bigger? Let's say I wanted to make my window 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. Watch what happens to my ball. See, we're still bouncing when the x-coordinate reaches 500. So if I change the width and height, I've got to go down here and change this one to 600 and this one to 800. And then the next time I change it, I have to change it in both places. It's kind of annoying to have to change it over and over again. Well, what programmers do to solve that problem is create something called a constant. We're going to make a constant called width that's 800, and we're going to make a constant called height that's 600. Okay, So these are just special variables that we put in all caps to indicate that they're constants. They're not things that we're going to change over time, but it's something we want to use in more than one place. So now instead of saying I want my width to be 800, I want my width to be whatever width is set to, and I want my height to be set to whatever height is set to. And I want the ball to bounce those same values. Okay, So that way, if I ever want to change how big my window is, I can change it in one place up here at the top, and everywhere else it will use that value correctly. So now I have the right behavior. Okay, So for next time, what I'd like you to think about is, what if we wanted to add a second ball to the screen? What would we have to do? Think about it, give it a try, and next time we'll talk about the hard way to do it, and then we'll go over an easier way to do it. Good luck, see you next time.